Then you can do all sorts of things with light, because then you can add a colour gel if you wanted. There's just so many things you can do. I always think of a portrait set as two distinct halves. If you draw a line through the model across here, you've got your lighting that way, which is your main light for lighting the face. Everything behind there is effect lights. They're just effect lights. They're for lighting your background, uh, put a hair light on, anything like that. They are just effect lights. They're not, they're not doing anything to, to do with the face of the model. If we talk about low key lighting for a second, just while I've got this set up, low key, if we switch the main light out, and we just ask Celia to turn her face this way towards me a bit, no, no, that's enough. And we, we just use this light. You can present quite a stark picture. You get quite a stark picture. The important thing you must watch for is a catch light in the eyes. Now at the minute, the, the face has got lighting on it. Can you see what I meant about any side light or back light brings out the texture? Now that skin tone's not very flattering there. Now people say, what, what do you do when, when a model starts perspiring or anything like that? Well, I have a pocket full of equipment and none of it you buy in Jessup's. It's all bought at Boots the Chemist. Face powder. Always have face powder, never without me face powder. And what I do is, if we look at the, uh, Celia's brow, it's, it, you can let a lot affect your, your, your face. I'm not doing this totally, I would do it a lot better than this if, uh, if I was doing it for real. But just to give you some idea, that that has killed a lot of those highlights. Now, what did it take me to do that? 20 seconds, half a minute? How long would it take you to do that in Adobe? It's also another way of getting to talk and chat to the model. I always say, anyway. Um, so, the next thing you need to look for is to try and get a catch light in the eyes. Now, if Celia just what I then do is, uh, well, I'll do it through the camera because I don't want to, there. Just keep your eye there for a minute, darling. I'm going to move away. Now we see that catch light. There. Now lower your eyes down the floor. Now up again. See that catch light? The thing about low key and that kind of thing, it is very, very precise. Very precise. Because what you need to aim for, ideally, Ideally, you want a triangle of light on this cheek. Otherwise, it, it looks too, too hatchet. Half lit, half black. So I always look, and you also need a catch light in this eye. So I would always make sure... Just let's have that off there. So, sorry, Don. No. Oh. Oh, I'll have cures for that. Right. Just look there again. I look for the, high, the, the triangular light here and a catch light in the eyes. If Celia turned her head just a bit this way, there, and eyes up there again, you've only got one catch light with half one just creeping in there and just a touch under the eye, which tends to make that eye look funny. So the actual positioning of the model is quite precise. It's quite precise, low key. That's why it's hard to do. Because if you don't get it right, you get the eyes looking funny. If with a female, you would probably bring up the texture of her skin, which is not very flattering. And you keep all light off the background, that would be black, that would be highlight. You wouldn't see her ear on a conventional picture, you wouldn't see her ear because it would be just totally black. There's no light falling on it. If there's no light falling on it, it's going to be black. Simple as that. So everything away from here would be black. Um, you sort of frame up a bit like that, or something like that, and have a look into the empty space. Um, so you've got to be quite precise with, with, with low key. Just bring yourself back around again, sweetheart. Bring yourself back around.
other accessories I use a lot of, and again, it's to do with me. It's not, it's not uh, everybody's cup of tea. When I'm taking pictures and I see a little bit of stray hair here, do I take the picture and then try and deal with it afterwards? It's got a little hairbrush. And I will just very gently do that. Sort it out, picture done. I'm close to the model, I'm talking to her. She, you know, I'm not saying intimate, but you, you feel part of a team if you, if you work like this rather than, if it doesn't stay up. <laughs> <laughs> it, that, that normally works quite well, that. I've, I've, I've found that works quite well. Um, other things I, I always have with me, many years ago, it, it doesn't happen so much nowadays, is perhaps, uh, it's irrelevant in a way, is lipstick. I always have a lipstick because I used to do all my portraits in black and white. And there was a certain tone of lipstick which just made the lips look right. And if she came along and she had the wrong coloured lipstick on, and when you did your print she was the lipless wonder. You couldn't do much about it. That's the right lipstick. Put that on, I know it's going to record correctly in black and white. The other thing I use a lot of, and I'm not sure if I've got it with me, I don't think I have, no I don't, is lip gloss. Now that might sound strange, lip gloss, doesn't it? But if, if it, it gets quite warm when you're working in a small studio, and she gets dry, and how many times can you to wet the lips and make them juicy? One little bit of lip gloss on the lips, and they'll shine the rest of the night. Now, I always say, take your own, because the model mightn't have any. So I carry lip gloss. If ever I get stopped by the police and look at my bag, I'm in trouble. <laughs> the other thing I use a lot of, mainly when I'm doing glamour or um, even portraits, is clothes pegs. Never without a bag full of clothes pegs. If, if I could ask Celia just to turn your knees this way, sweetheart. Thank you. No, it doesn't apply to Celia, but if a girl is wearing a blouse that comes off the bust and it's a loose blouse and it hangs down and you take a picture, I'll guarantee you she'll look ten months pregnant. She's just lost her shape. So what can you do about it? Close pegs. You go round the back, you gather her clothes together and you peg it. If you want the hair back, bring the hair back, my God, twist it into a little knot and peg it. No, I'm not going to photograph the clothes pegs. I did this demo at one club and a bloke come up and had about four clothes pegs down this girl's blouse. Just turned around and took a picture and there's this line of clothes pegs down her back. It's so stupid he'd take them with a, you wouldn't photograph them with the pegs in the picture. But it's a handy thing just for a short term to get rid of something like a bit of hair. I mean that one, very simple to just Tuck that up and put a clothes peg in the back, just so long as you don't photograph the clothes pegs. And I've never without them. A lot of people laugh at them, they can laugh all they like, I don't care.